there everyone and welcome to a new podcast called PSHE for you. This is a podcast that is going to be going out into schools uh, covering a wide range of topics all to do with PSHE uh, which we hope you're going to find really really helpful. So uh, this is our first episode and today we are going to be covering COVID-19. Obviously the COVID-19 pandemic is something that's affected us all this year so we thought it'd be a really important thing to cover in our very very first episode. So to start with, just by way of introduction, I'm going to introduce you to the regular contributors to this uh, podcast going forward, and then to our two special guests who are going to help us out today. So hello there, everyone. My name is Paul, and I am a Healthy Lifestyles Officer for Children and Young People. Hi, and I'm Caroline. I work for the Council's Public Protection Partnership in the Trading Standards section. Hi, everyone. I'm Nikki, and I look after health and wellbeing in schools. Hi, I'm Vicky. I work for West Berkshire Council Public Protection Partnership in the Trading Standards Department. Lovely. Thank you very much, everyone. And I'm very excited to welcome uh, two guests to the podcast today for our first episode. And I'll let them introduce themselves. So start with over to you, Naomi. Hi, I'm Naomi and I'm Head of Biology at Kennett School. Lovely. Well, thank you for coming on today. Thank you for having me. And also we have Sarah. Hi everybody, um, I'm Sarah. I'm a public health doctor and I'm currently based at the, in the public health team at West Berkshire Council and I also work for Public Health England as well. Brilliant, yeah, and thanks again for, for joining us. It's going to be a really, really interesting episode, I'm sure. So let, let's start off, shall we? And let's go right back to the basics. And I wonder whether, Naomi, you'd, you'd mind kicking us off. Can you just, just make it real, real nice and simple for us? What what is COVID-19? Yeah, of course. So um, COVID-19, as you all will know, is a virus. And what we mean by that is that it's a pathogen. So something that can go into a body and affect you um, and affect living things. So it can be transmitted. Um, well, COVID-19 itself is transmitted through, through the air. So someone was to sneeze and the particles would be able to travel from one person to another. And um, that's one example. Um, we would have come across viruses before that would have um, traveled from skin to skin or through the air, through water or through blood. And there's lots of different ways in which viruses can travel. Um, now, with COVID-19, it's it's very tricky because they haven't come up with a way of being able to um, to cure it. So with viruses, they can't be treated with antibiotics like bacterial infections could. So they need to be able to combat it with the vaccination. But unfortunately, we haven't been able to, uh, to nail down a successful vaccination yet. Um, but they are obviously working on this and they're hoping to be able to get one soon. And if this is the case, then we should be able to, um, to find a way of, of being able to prevent COVID-19 from spreading to more people. So when someone gets uh, COVID-19, what, what are the main, the main symptoms? What, how will it affect people? Yeah, so this is tricky because it affects different people in different ways. So the symptoms vary massively. It could be that someone has just a, persist, a persistent cough. Um, it could be that they have a cough with a high temperature, which is usually over 38 degrees. Um, or it could be that they are breathless. Um, some people might just have a high temperature and one of the um, symptoms that came quite late um, into what they said was symptom was loss of taste and smell, um, which is a bit of an unusual one. But any of those symptoms now, um, if you get one of them, you need to be tested. And some people won't get any symptoms at all. And that's the bit that's quite tricky because they're then asymptomatic. So people can be walking around with COVID-19 without necessarily realizing that they have it. Yeah, no, I always find that quite, quite strange to get my head around. And, and I'm right in saying that, that anyone can catch COVID-19, can't they? Yeah, anyone at all, from a baby up to somebody who's of, of our older generation. Okay, Sarah, just, um... Lots of, it's a little bit of confusion, really. Lots of people think that if they get COVID-19, they're automatically going to end up in hospital um, on life support machines. Is that correct? No, that's not correct. Um, actually, not everybody ends up in hospital. I know that that's what we've heard about on the news a lot um, and what we see out there in the media. And that's been a bit of 
the focus of the information that we've seen. Um, some people actually just have extremely mild symptoms. It might be just like a cold or flu and just need to rest at home. Um, can take paracetamol to help with the symptoms. It is important that everybody who has it isolates at home for 10 days. Um, but for some people, it is very, very mild. However, we do know that some people are um, at more risk of having of becoming more poorly and this might be people who have um, certain health conditions already if they're elderly or if they're from particular ethnic backgrounds um, and we know that this is because their immune system may struggle to fight the virus and so these groups of people may need to have to go into hospital and um, may just need basic treatment in hospital or they may in the worst cases require to go to intensive care units. Thank you for that Sarah. Um, do we really need to keep washing our hands often? Yes, it's really important that we reduce the likelihood of the virus moving from one person to, to another. Now, although people wash their hands after using, the to after using the toilet throughout the day and maybe before you eat food, we don't realise how much we touch our faces throughout, even just sitting in a lesson, um, people are touching their faces quite nearly every single minute and um, so it's really important that we're able to wash our hands as often as possible to minimize the risk of moving the virus from one person to another. Thank you. Sarah I wanted to ask so if I'm 14, 15 and I've gone back to school so is it okay for me now to go around to my friend's house after school? Sure that's a good question um, it's really important that we all still keep our distance from each other and that's really the, one of the most important things we can do to reduce the risk of catching or spreading coronavirus. When you're at school, um, schools will have their own social distancing rules and these are to keep people safe but while um, still being able to teach you properly and for children still to be able to attend school. Um, when you're outside of school then you're responsible for keeping yourself safe. Um, so when thinking about meeting friends in your own house after school or in their, in their house, um, the government guidance changed recently um, and now the rule of six is in place. So this states that if you're seeing people who you don't live with normally, it should only be groups of up to six people and still following social distancing rules. So in reality, this means keeping, trying to keep a two metre distance away from each other. And two metres is slightly further than you think. If you think about a tall person, around somebody who's around six foot, that's about two metres. Um, and you still, um, and if you can't, absolutely can't keep two metres, then um, you can go down to one metres plus, but only really if you have other measures in place, such as wearing a face mask. And it's important to realise that the rule of six is still the same, even if you're meeting people indoors or outdoors, still can only be six people. Um, it is much safer to meet people outdoors as the fresh air can help to give better ventilation and so help to reduce the risk of spreading the virus. Yeah, I just wanted to pick up something you said there, Sarah, about um, face coverings, because obviously that is something that, that people can have and um, to get a little bit closer. But there are quite a lot of different rules about certain places where I'd, I'd need to wear a face covering and places where uh, I can meet up with more than six people. Are you able to go into that a little bit? Yeah, no, absolutely. So I think firstly, it's important to say a face covering is essentially something that covers your nose and your mouth. So that could be a scarf, it could be a purpose made face covering, um, anything that's just covering over that area. And so stopping you spreading any droplets from coughing or speaking or shouting. Um, so face masks can be reusable or they might just be single use only and disposable. If you're wearing a face covering that helps to reduce you spreading coronavirus from yourself to other people and this is important because as um, we mentioned earlier some people may not have symptoms of coronavirus um, but also you can spread the virus up to two days before you develop symptoms yourself so there's a period of time where you may not realize that you're unwell but you can still spread it to other people whereas if you're wearing a face covering that helps to reduce that spread um, at the moment, uh, the law says that there's lots of places where you must wear a face covering. And so that includes um, being on public transport, for example, buses or trains, shops and supermarkets, um, shopping within shopping centres, within other um, enclosed areas such as post offices and banks, entertainment venues um, and other places such as um, spas or places that give beauty treatments. You need face coverings in these places because they're generally indoors and so it's more likely that um, you can the virus is going to spread um, it's less likely when you're outdoors and the air can circulate more freely and um, 
Again, also in these places, it might be more difficult to keep a social distance from other people, but also you're coming into contact with people who you don't normally meet. So it'd be difficult to get in contact with those people should you then start to show symptoms. Although, as I said, the rule of six means that when you're seeing friends or family you don't live with, you need to, it should only be in groups of six or less. There are some exceptions to this. Um, and those would include, for example, being at school, um, going to work, if you need to help people who are in trouble, um, weddings and civil partnerships or funerals um, are also excluded um, from that. And the reason for these different rules is that because um, in those instances, for example, schools and going to work, the people and the companies um, involved would have taken, undertaken lots of measures to make sure they're what we call COVID secure. Um, and that usually involves um, putting measures in place to help people to keep a distance from each other, um, having um, more cleaning in place, making sure people are using hand sanitizer, among lots of other things. Um, team sports are another thing that's um, still allowed, even though you may be in a group of more than six. And that's generally for sports where the body in charge of them has published guidance on how to do so safely. But it's still really important to limit your social interaction with other people when you are taking part in these different um, places. Um, and I suppose it's important to say that although there are some places that will have more than six people in them, for example, if you went to a leisure centre or a restaurant or a pub, um, within your group attending that place, you still should be within a group of six or less. If you go to somewhere like um, a leisure centre and you meet other people that you know, you still need to avoid seeing them if you're already within a group of six. Um, and it's still important to keep your distance from people. Um, and often when you're visiting a place like a restaurant or a pub, um, you'll need to give your contact details to those organisers so that you can be contacted by the test and trace programme if needed. Hi everyone, you're listening to PSHE for you, PSHE podcast for schools. That's been really helpful to give all that information, but I suppose it still comes down to sometimes about and your advice would be really helpful about what should I do if I feel really uncomfortable or unsafe in places where there are lots of people and maybe those people aren't social distancing or there aren't, they aren't wearing um, face coverings. What should I do? Yeah, and I think it's really difficult. And I think the more and more um, restrictions have been relaxed and the more we're going out and doing things that we used to do before lockdown happened, I think this happens... Um, is happening more and more often and it can be really difficult. I mean, in an ideal world, we would want everybody to take the guidance seriously, keep a social distance and wear face coverings as needed. Um, but that's not always the case and that can feel quite uncomfortable if you're out there in an area and people aren't following the guidance. However, I think you need to realize that you can only control your own actions. You, you can't be in charge of what other people do. Um, you can do your best to keep away from people, even if they're not themselves socially distancing. It may mean standing a bit further away from people in a queue or avoiding busy places. I think we can all help to try change the social norms by wearing a face mask when we're needed. And the more and more people do that, then the more it becomes just normal. And those people who aren't wearing a face mask may, may start feeling uncomfortable that they're actually the ones not following the rules. However, fundamentally, I guess, if you're feeling uncomfortable in a situation and feel that you can't keep yourself or other people safe, it is best to try and remove yourself from that. Um, if you can. That's really helpful and I think also it's about telling people that you're with or maybe sharing that with your mum and dad or your carer or even maybe a teacher that actually this is making you feel uncomfortable. Thanks. What does local doc lockdown mean? What would it look like if it happened here? Yeah, I think local lockdown is a term that we're hearing more and more and you've probably heard about it on the news or seen it and um, people talk about it. Um, and really that means that some of the measures that we've seen before when the whole country was on lockdown, um, they're getting reintroduced into particular areas, so a particular geographical area, um, instead of going across the whole country. And so that's how we're trying to focus on controlling the pandemic right now instead of in reintroducing a, a big lockdown like we saw um, recently across everywhere we're just focusing on areas that have the greatest number of cases and that's um, through monitoring those areas closely and by introducing measures there we're trying to prevent those numbers rising sharply and so trying to reduce the spread 
what it means in practice, um, it means that certain things that may have been in place before might get reintroduced. So that may, what's happened in other areas is the opening of restaurants and cafes and pubs was delayed. Um, so although most of the country it happened um, a, a while ago now, then there were certain areas where um, these weren't allowed to open because the cases were too high. There's other areas at the moment where um, you're still not allowed to meet people outside of your own household and that's either indoors or outdoors. Indoor gyms and swimming pools are still closed in some areas. Um, so these are all different types of measures that may um, happen um, depending on the area and depending on the number of infections that we had. Thank you. So I'm quite fortunate really that um, my husband and myself obviously living in the same house um, but what happens to, to people who aren't with, living with their partners? Um, are they supposed to socially distance from their, from their partners, from the people that they're in a relationship with if they're not in, living in the same house or in the same bubble as them? Yeah, and I think um, it's a really great question because um, I'm sure it's on everybody's minds really. Um, you don't need to keep a distance from your boyfriend or girlfriend. Um, even if you're not living in the same house with them. If you're in a really new relationship, you might initially try and follow the guidance on social distancing, but as that relationship develops and becomes more established um, and you're having closer contact, um, then you can do that and keep within the guidance. It is still a good idea to maybe have a chat together about how you can help to prevent transmitting you know the possibility of transmitting the virus to other people. Um, and so it's still, worth, it's still important to reduce close contact with other people that you're not living with. Thank you, Sarah. So coming back to uh, the issue of face coverings, I, I I'm sure I'm not the only one who's had this issue in, in the last couple of months, but I often will find that, um, you know, I forget about it or actually, um, you know, I'll, I'll lose it or I'll, I'll get up, get, get to the shops and then I'll, oh, I'll have to turn back. And um, if that's something that, that people are, are struggling with, Naomi, I just thought I'd bring you in on this. What, what, what could people do if you've got a, if you've got someone at school that, that's forgotten their face covering and they might need it, what, what, what can they do? Yeah, so there's two points to this. In terms of um, go, just going to the shops, obviously it is a legal requirement for everyone to be wearing face masks into shops at the moment. Um, I've done this myself and had to turn around. It's really frustrating. Um, what I found the easiest thing to do um, in terms, um, if I'm going shopping, is to have a face mask in your bag, have a face mask in your coat, have a face mask in um, your car, and just having, and you can make them as well. It doesn't need to be expensive in order for you to be able to buy lots of them. Um, you can make some, um, and there's loads and loads of YouTube videos showing you how to do this. Um, but having these in basically everywhere so that you avoid forgetting them and you always have them on you. Now, in terms of school, um, we currently at our school don't require pupils to wear face masks, face coverings um, throughout the school. We've actually got a lot of other precautions in place, such as a one-way system through buildings, having hand gel outside the buildings. We've got year group bubbles so that if pupils, um, if we do get one case, then we're able to limit it to the, a particular bubble. Um, we have delayed start to lessons um and so that we don't have too many pupils in the corridor at the same time and um, so we're we're not advised by public health england for students to wear face covering coverings although they are allowed to if they wish um, but i would imagine if it becomes mandatory so if we do get more cases and we and we are we're a school that are told that we have to have them then i'd imagine school will have spares um if it is a requirement that if you do forget them then hopefully you'd be able to see the school nurse or matron in order to be able to get your hands on one to borrow so that's we've covered so much about what's happened in the past what's currently happening i think it's really helpful to think about what we need to be thinking about for the next few months um yeah no absolutely and i think we um there's lots of things that we need to be thinking about some stuff that we're already doing um, so we need to be continue to listening to the scientists public health and the government our schools try and keep up to date with the guide guidelines and try and stay safe by doing all the stuff we've talked about already today so keeping our distance from each other um, either two meters or one meter with a face mask um, 
we've talked lots about face masks uh, and for now everybody really needs to wear them in all public places and on public transport um, and really looking after those face masks so if it's washable it needs to be washed regularly every day ideally if it's disposable then you need to get rid of it properly in a bin after use really important not to share your face masks um, in this instance sharing is definitely not caring um, but also hand washing is very important I think people are often think oh it's just so basic it's not it's not going to make a difference but honestly the most important thing any of us could do is to regu regularly wash our hands especially before any contact with your face or before eating soap and water is absolutely the best thing that you can do um, and ideally for around 20 seconds I'm sure everybody's aware by now that um, that is roughly enough time to sing happy birthday twice through and um, so that's um, a way that you can make sure you're doing it for long enough um, and also really important to get in between your fingers backs of the hands so to help a good sort of routine about covering each bit of your hand if you're in an area where you don't have soap and water then um, you can use hand sanitizer um, as long as your hands are sort of look clean then hand sanitizer will do um, but ideally soap and water is the best thing you can do Brilliant. Thanks for that, Sarah. Yeah, I'm sure we'll never forget that uh, fact about a uh, happy birthday, definitely. <laughs> uh, Naomi, particularly around schools, what, what would your, I don't know, advice be or, or things, things to be thinking about for, for the next few months? Yeah, I think the biggest one, we all know exactly, and especially in schools, they've had it drilled into them in two sessions over the last two weeks about how we could keep safe. Um, but the one thing that we have noticed is, you know, just to be kind to each other. Um, lockdown has been really hard on some people um, and just not knowing what's going on in people's backgrounds, just having a smile and being kind to one another, to your peers, could be the difference between someone having a really bad or a really good day. Um, and although not necessarily, um, you know, a uh, talking about the virus here, but just just talk be nice to each other we don't know how long this is going to go on for we don't know how how people are dealing with it at home and it's just really really important to just um, be nice to one another in school so we've all been battling this since march um we've gone from full lockdown to partial lockdown some areas of the country have now gone back into full lockdown and we're all just wanting some answers. We're all thinking, how long is this going to go on for? And do we know? Do we have any ideas? Are we still going to be sit sitting like this this time next year? Sarah, do we have any ideas at okay. all? Yeah, I really, really wish I knew the answer to that question. Um, but we don't know exactly how long it's going to go on for. It is likely to be a large number of months yet, though, I'm afraid. Um, there's so much research going on um, across this country and across the world um, and clinical trials are taking place um, to try and find a vaccine to prevent the spread of COVID-19. Um, we know that um, trials are progressing, volunteers are currently um, receiving the vaccine uh, and the scientists are doing their best um, and we have some promising results um, with regards to vaccine trials. However, um, it's still very much in the early stages and we need to make sure a vaccine's safe before it went out to everybody in the, in the country. Um, so that's not going to help us in the immediate future. Um, and I think really it's about kind of understanding that this is where we are now and um, trying to live in the moment and kind of keep ourselves safe um, by doing all the things that we've talked about already today and and really just trying to enjoy life how it is now I know it's very different to how it was before um, but there's still lots of positives we can take from now um, and I think if we all work really hard to stay together and stay safe then we can um, you know get through this and before we know it we'll be into the next phase. Thank you for those positives Sarah thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, Sarah and Naomi. I think your, your insights have been really, really helpful. Uh, thank you for being our, our, our first special guest on, on our podcast. Thanks for having me. Thank you. It's been great. So I hope that's been a really helpful for everyone that's listening. Um, and if you do want any more information about everything to do with COVID, you can get more information on the NHS website and also on the, the Gov website at gov.uk forward slash coronavirus. I just wanted to quickly pick up on what Naomi was saying about being kind. And this has been you know, a challenging time for lots of people. And so if you are finding that you're, you're struggling at the moment, it is really important to, uh, to, to talk to someone about your mental health. And also we're very lucky in West Berkshire that we do have uh, time to talk youth counselling services 
and also uh, COOF counselling services, which you can get on your mobile and you can download it, um, download it as an app. Uh, so I just want to end by saying thank you very much uh, to everyone again for being involved with this, uh, this first episode. Uh, you've been listening to PSHE for you and we look forward to uh, speaking to you again soon. Thank you for listening to PSHE for you. All of the guidance and advice in today's episode was correct for people living in England as of the 16th of September 2020. Please make sure you keep up to date with the latest guidance on the coronavirus by visiting gov.uk forward slash coronavirus.